Mexico's primaries are a little over a month away. Our state is one of the last in the country to vote primaries this year. Now here's my question. Would you like to see any of these presidential candidates come to New Mexico? Why or why not? And are you planning to vote in the primaries this year? That I'd really like to know. Get in touch with us here at New Mexico in Focus at NewMexicoInFocus.org and tell us what you think. You can also connect with us on Facebook and Twitter. I'm joined at the line table this week by Daniel Foley, former New Mexico House Minority Whip. Sophie Martin is here. She's an attorney and editor of DukeCityFix.com. Former State Senator Didi Feldman is with us and Phil Marquez of Talk Radio Inc. He's back with us. Didi, this week, Republican candidates Ted Cruz, John Kasich announced they would work together to try to defeat Mr. Trump by dividing up the remaining states with primaries and not campaigning against each other, but that didn't last very long. What does this do for New Mexico voters? Should we be insulted? Should we be... Yeah, just, it's hey, say la vie, you know, we know how it's going. How should we, how should we internalize this? I think we should laugh. I mean, I think it will have no effect here, uh. basically. I, I mean, I think the poll data, uh, the last one that we had was in February, shows uh, that uh, Kasich was really down low. Uh, Cruz was just one point ahead, 25, 25% to Trump's 24%. Mm -hmm. This this might have the uh, the effect of, of handing it to Trump, mm -hmm. uh, but certainly uh, Kasich's efforts, I think, have been a little bit laughable here. I mean, his campaign manager mentioned that New Mexico was structurally similar to the Midwest and the Middle Atlantic states, right. and and that that really made me laugh. I did you know. Too. <laughs> <laughs> How we're compared to Rhode Island, I don't know. <laughs> it was very Lots of Democrats. Maybe. I, I, apparently, it's got to go deeper than <laughs> that. What do you think of this strategy, though? It's an interesting strategy when you think about it, from Mr. Kasich and Mr. R you know what I mean? No, no, they've got to do something yeah, if they I mean, really want to win this. So, thing, so, so. you're basically saying mm -hmm. the three of us are in a fight. Why don't the two of us join up to beat that guy up, and then we'll fight each other? Right. Um, and it's interesting because right after they cut this deal, apparently uh, Governor Kasich didn't get the message because he's out saying, well, there's no strategy. We're all, you know, Cruz is on the other channel saying, we got a strategy. So right. I, I think it shows you how far uh, the Republican Party is willing to go, the establishment folks, to prevent Trump mm. from getting the nomination. Mm -hmm. I don't think it's going to work. Mm -hmm. I just think it's, you know, I mean, it's kind of like, you know, Cruz gets walloped, you know, Wednesday night and on Thursday and uh, Tuesday night and on Wednesday announces a vice presidential running mate. I mean, I'm, you know, you, you went over and, uh, you know, and you got beaten states by John Kasich. And now you've announced um, you've announced your, your vice presidential running mate. So mm -hmm. I think it's going to be interesting to see. I, I don't think New Mexicans should be insulted. Mm -hmm. I do think it's interesting to see, whereas as as of this morning, um, you know, the media is talking about Bernie Sanders laid off what uh, almost half of the really? campaign staff and he seems to be dialing it back. But there's an opportunity for the first time in a very long time for New Mexico to actually have a position, to mm -hmm. actually, mm -hmm. you know, I mean, people are going to need these. Every vote that Trump gets brings him closer. Mm -hmm. Every vote that they keep Trump from getting prevents him from getting that nomination on the first ballot. All leads up to the, to the convention, surely. I'm not going to redo the, uh, the delegate count as it stands now because it's confusing and I don't have it in my head. However, interestingly, Phil Marquez, this idea of theirs to kind of block on this one side of the football field but leave some free running over here was interesting. What did you make of Mr. Trump's response to this? Because his, his response was really quite sharp. I, I thought he'd sort of lay off it a little bit. What, what did you take away from it? Well, he's going to stick with lying Ted. And Kasich is going to run around trying to figure out what he's doing. Right. The fact is, is, the ball is rolling for Trump. He's on his way. Mm -hmm. It's going to happen. But every delegate counts. Mm -hmm. So I would not be surprised mm -hmm. uh, that you could see some activity uh, from the GOP in, in New Mexico mm -hmm. for the simple reason they're going to need every vote they can get. Mm -hmm. Now, whether or not they're going to spend millions of dollars like they have in some other states, probably not. Mm -hmm. But I wouldn't be, it wouldn't surprise me if there isn't. Uh, a fly in, a fly out kind of thing here in the state right. because they've got to have these delegates. Mm -hmm. Trump's on a roll. I don't think it's really stopping. After this past and I Tuesday, I think it's a great yeah. opportunity for Trump too in mm -hmm. New Mexico to come spend some money with his the the comments and the perceived comments about the border and everything. Right. You know, if he comes in and could win New Mexico and you know jump that gap from the 25 points that he's got to you know a 60, 70 percent win. You know, it lets someone go out and say, look, this is a majority minority state, it's a minor majority Democrat state, and overwhelmingly I won them. I think it could be crucial also if Cruz and Kasich can 
battle here and say, look, this is another state that he didn't get 51% in. That's right. And for, the, for everybody out there in the general public to think about, it's a majority minority Democrat state that he didn't get 50% in, so how can he beat Hillary? And that's what it's coming down to. That's interesting. About. That's I, interesting. I, I gotta Please. say, I think that June is awfully far away, mm -hmm. and I, from the beginning, have wondered, like, is this truce over New Mexico actually going to hold? Not that I think that we're the most important state, but if it comes down to it, mm -hmm. that on June 7th, uh, Trump doesn't have the delegates locked down that he needs to avoid a contested uh, convention, mm -hmm. then um, I suspect that Cruz will, in fact, campaign here, mm -hmm. and as he will have to with every state that, um, that uh, votes on that day. Sure. I also, I mean, you know, Phil didn't say it, but I, but I think it's important to note, New Mexico has really sort of suffered over the past, I don't know, decade by being a more or less uncontested state. Even if we're contested in the primary, it's good for us economically. Right. And it's good for radio, it's good for TV, it's good for print. And, um, and so I think from an economic standpoint, we would really like to be a contested state. We'd like to see Cruz come back in. Mm -hmm. Now, from a, you know, putting up with the dealing, you know, dealing with all the news coverage, et cetera, maybe a little less exciting if you have made your mind up about who you're going to vote for in that part. Particularly because we never know what could be happening on the 5th, the 6th, the day before. It's True. an incendiary race, Dee Dee Feldman. Anybody could say anything and just change the dynamics, and it's, it's a very interesting thing. I want to make a switch, though, guys, to another interesting wrinkle in our primaries here in New Mexico, and that is this idea of 18-year-olds being allowed to vote in this primary. 17. We, 17, 17, sorry. That's yeah. a big difference. Yeah. It's a big difference. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, thank you for that. You're going to be 18 by November, right? That's right. November, That's yeah. right. Yeah. I, I find this very interesting, and I'm curious where you are on this as well, because if, if you, it's, I don't expect anybody to swing a vote with a youth vote here, but however, getting kids into the idea of just voting seems like a positive to me as soon as you can. What, what do you make definitely, of this? Mm -hmm. Definitely, definitely a, uh, I think about 800 uh, 17 no year olds have mm -hmm. uh, registered already. Interestingly, according to the Secretary of State's office, about a quarter of them have registered as independents right. or declined to state, so mm -hmm. they won't be able to vote in the primary. Mm -hmm. So uh, that's another aspect of our primary system here. Mm -hmm. uh, we have a closed primary where independents and declined to state are not able to vote. This is unlike some of the other states mm -hmm. uh, that have had presidential primaries mm -hmm. already, and it will affect the outcome, um, and uh, as will, it will the fact that the delegates here mm -hmm. are awarded proportionately. There, it's not a winner-take-all or a winner-take-most states. Mm -hmm. It's a proportional uh, arrangement here. Uh, but I think it's great for the 17-year-olds. 17, 17 they can also register online. Right. But another problem is the fact that uh, our registration deadline is so far from the election. It's, it's May 10th. 10th. Right. Yes. Yeah, it's May 10th. <laughs> so this is like, you know, who knows? As Sophie said, there's a long way between now and June. Mm -hmm. Who knows what can happen mm -hmm. in the presidential primary between then? Mm -hmm. Interesting. I'm interested in your take on this, too. Getting more young people involved. Again, Maybe not this cycle, maybe not the next cycle, but as it grows, suddenly we have a force to be reckoned with here, it seems to me. I think um, I was remembering when they turned the 18-year-olds were to, able to vote, and there was this big thing that there was going to be a massive That's rush right. of 18-year-olds, right. and it didn't happen. <laughs> it was like, what happened to everybody? But over the years, I think the younger people are more aware of what's going on. And I think it's an opportunity for them to get involved. And I think that's absolutely wonderful. The key point is independent. Mm -hmm. and we're seeing that growth becoming more and more across the nation. Mm -hmm. And I think that you've got a generation that's coming up that just doesn't want to say, I'm part of this party or part of that party. I'll make my decision based on the person. Good point. And I don't think that's yep. a bad idea. That's right. Sophie, interestingly, Gary Johnson, our ex-governor, is still out there as libertarian candidate. He's getting coverage. He's getting news. He's getting followers. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a legit... 11, yeah. 11 and a half. Yeah. That's right. He's he 11 and a half. Right. 15. 10%. 15. He's on the... That's right. He's yeah. in the debate. That's right. It's within striking And it's distance. interesting, yeah. sort of going back to the 17-year-olds, but also Please. talking about, mm -hmm. about um, Gary Johnson. You know, conventional wisdom says that... Says that uh, at the age of, by the age of 30, you have really picked your political party. Mm -hmm. You've decided, I'm going to be this, I'm going to be that. And after 30, people tend not to change their voter registration, not to change to another party. Mm -hmm. um, Gary Johnson seems to be appealing to a fairly young electorate. So mm -hmm. potentially those 17-year-olds are looking at Gary Johnson and saying, that's what, that's what I want. I would encourage them to talk to people who remember what it was like in New Mexico under Gary Johnson's administration. Um, I mean, he was called, was he called Governor No? Is that right? Yeah. Governor um, Vito. Governor Vito. Um, 
if, if you are somebody who's looking at our current go federal government and saying, I see a lot of gridlock there and I don't like it, mm -hmm. this is somebody who pioneered gridlock in New Mexico. Mm -hmm. And so it, I think it's, it's worth kind of paying attention to that. Got to get your take on Gary Johnson before we get out of here. About 30 oh, seconds I just, just think it's, it's, mm -hmm. it's interesting. <clears throat> I mean, Gary is, you know, you talk about a guy that's got timing throughout his whole life. I mean, <laughs> when he ran for governor, everybody was like, who is this guy? Oh, no right. chance. That's yeah. right. I mean, John Dendahl, Dick Cheney, no chance. He wins. Right. You know, now he puts his name out there for president. Everybody's like, this is a joke. He's pulling at 11 and a half, 15, gets him on the stage. Right. I mean, the guy is, you know, I'm telling you right now, there could be no greater comical event than to see Hillary Clinton, <laughs> Donald Trump, and Gary Johnson on the same stage together. I want to see that happen. I really <laughs> want to see that happen. When we come back to the line, we'll look at a new report on the number of parents in New Mexico who have been incarcerated at some point in their lives.